just get rid of bind, take your existing data, and load it up, and you're ready to go. Twisted also has an SSH server. Um, this is uh, in the Twisted Conch package. Um, Conch implements both SSH and Telnet, but there's really no reason anyone should ever use Telnet ever again, so please forget I said that. Um, this here is the command that you need to run an SSH server on port 2222. Um, kind of. The, uh, technically, this is complete, but there are a couple other considerations. You need to make sure that Twisty is in your path and can run as root. You can load all your Python code. And the Python path is right as root. Um, uh, you also need to generate an SSH server key unless you want to use the one that's already in slash Etsy. And so it's not, th this one is probably the one that the fewest number of people will be able to just run and get going immediately. Uh, but again, Conch is, uh, if, if you were going to be replacing your system data, uh, running Conch is very easy. It kind of expects to just sit there and line 22 and do everything that OpenSSH does. Uh, and it, it is capable of doing that. Uh, Conch is a little bit squirrely as a library. You have to learn a little bit more. It's a little bit more confusing than some of the other code in Twisted. But nevertheless, uh, several large scale services as you have used it. Uh, if you ever made a branch on a launch pad, then you've used Conch. They use Conch as a front end for all of their SSH servers because, frankly, it's the only programmable SSH server. If you tried to use OpenSSH to just write an app, you would be very sad. Um, next up, an email server. Uh, Twisted contains implementations of POP3 and IMAP and SMTP, including the SMTP, of course. Uh, only SMTP and POP3 are actually available from the command line tool. Um, this command here runs an ESMTP and POP3 server, accepting email for localhost, which is the dash H option there. Um, and uh, accepting all of those emails into a directory called emails, which is what that dash E option is. So, uh, hopefully I've demonstrated in a very quick survey here that Twisted has a lot of built-in functionality. Um, it has a lot of stuff which is, goes way beyond just deciding an appropriate shape for your particular code. It gives you lots and lots of libraries to work with, which allow you to build pretty much any kind of network application. The obvious next question is, OK, so we wasted our time for like 10 years writing all of this code, which exists in these perfectly good servers that other people use. So why wouldn't we just use those? And there are some pretty good reasons. The main one is that all of these other servers, even if you like them individually, have different foundations. They're all built more or less from the ground up in C. Their low-level network code is all totally different. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to treat as library code. Uh, if you were to use Apache and try to just link it in and then process HTTP requests from your own code as an extension module, it would, I can see some people actually shaking their heads if they've been foolish enough to try. Uh, so uh, it's, they're hard to use as libraries. Um, even if you could load them all as libraries, you wouldn't necessarily be able to load those libraries at the same time, because Apache has its idea about how sockets work and how I.O. works, and Bind has its idea, and Hybrid IRC B has its idea. Um, which means that if you want to build an application that actually involved involve more than one protocol, you end up having to construct a pile of bailing wire that's really hard to test, um, it's hard to diagnose problems with, and systems like this become very fragile. You end up restarting your servers a lot, complaining about inscrutable problems that you can't understand because you have to run GDB across 12 different processes to see what's going on. Um, raise your hand if you've ever written a cron job that does something with proc now. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you've done that, you know how painful it is. If you haven't done it, it's probably because you couldn't figure it out uh, if you needed to do it because it's really unnecessarily tricky. So Twisted, every server has the same foundation. Uh, they're all written against the same APIs. Uh, they all run either in the same process or in different processes, because Twisted has process control APIs as well. You treat a process the same way it treats a socket in terms of getting I.O. to and from it. Um, 
which means that when you need to communicate between processes or between uh, objects in Twisted, it's just a matter of getting the object you need to call the method on and making method calls on. Another reason that doing all of this rewriting in Twisted is important is uh, all of the Twisted servers also have client implementations of the protocols that they implement. Apache doesn't actually come with, so Apache is a super production grade HTTP server, but it doesn't come with the same level of HTTP clients. There is some code in there, like Apache Bench and whatnot, but it's, if you use it, you know it's kind of fragile, and it's certainly not um, nearly as good as the server code. But Twisted, not only do we test our own clients against our own servers, uh, if you want to communicate with other servers on the internet, if you want to integrate with other stuff via these standard protocols, you can just make outgoing connections along, uh, along with whatever protocol you're already using. So, uh, it's easy to make code look short when you're just typing in shell commands, which you can both know what. So, uh, how simple is Twisted really from a programmer's perspective? This is the most basic server you can have in Twisted. Uh, it echoes its input to its output. You can see why I say Twisted is simple. The equivalent code, by the way, using non-blocking sockets or async core actually does not fit on a slide. I don't think you'd be able to read it if I put it up here, so I don't, I don't have a slide to compare. This, by contrast, this fits in a tweet. <laughs> not an exaggeration, actually, if you look at my Twitter stream, you'll find it. Um, so let's look at each line. First, we've got, we got a class, Echo, that is a protocol. So that's a, it's a network protocol. That's its name. When some data is received, data which when some data is received, and the data is called data, it's in that parameter there, it just writes that data out to its transport, which is the outgoing socket. So that's an echo server with Twisted, but if you were to put that in a file and run it, it wouldn't do anything. So uh, there are a bunch of questions like, what port is it listening on? Is it using encryption? And how do we start the main loop? So I cheated a little bit. Um, Wi-Fi is not on tonight. Um, There's, there's a bunch of other code on here, which, uh, can you lower the lights since a little All right, well, you'll have to take my word for it that there's a bunch of other code on the slide. Um, oh, there It's we go. like magic. <laughs> so, Okay, um, the first thing we need is a factory. Uh, now, factory is a, or a protocol, rather, the thing we just wrote that echo there was, is a handler for a single connection. But for a server, the listening port, which accepts new incoming connections. So that's what a factory does. Uh, it notices there's a new incoming connection, creates a new protocol to handle that one connection, and then goes back to listen. So here are the lines in the factory. This is again, there is a protocol factory called Echo Factory, which when a new connection comes in, this is not data received, it's more like connection received, but it's called build protocol because what we eventually have to do here is build a protocol instance. So we return an instance of the uh, Echo protocol to handle that new connection. In order to fully hook this up, you have to do a couple of other things, um, really just two. Uh, first, you need to actually make an instance of your Echo Factory, 